Everybody, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back to another good old-fashioned kitchen counter thrift haul. <laughs> I had to think for a minute. Oh my goodness. Let's see what the coffee looks like today. A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you. A cozy corner, a table for Okay, today's cup of coffee is brought to us by, yes, the uh, Anchor Hawking Company. And this is their classic dehandled mug, which dates from the late 40s and was manufactured through the 50s. I'm sorry, through the uh, 60s. And anyway, in this particular color, it's called Peach Luster, which was enormously popular in the 1950s. Okay, and if that coffee looks a little strange to you, <laughs> does it have a little a slight uh, greenish tint? Well, I dropped half of a green peppermint candy cane in there for flavoring, and it's kind of given it an odd uh, glow-in-the-dark effect, but I'm sure that uh, if I've lasted 52 years, I'll be okay. All right, it's Saturday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and I have been busy. Got a lot of stuff to show you. Everything that you see on the counter here... You're going to be happy with me this time. Everything is for sale. I'm not going to tell you, oh no, sorry, I'm keeping that. And it's all currently listed. So if you see anything you're interested in, go get it. Uh, or go take a look. Uh, lots of pictures that are in much uh, brighter condition and uh, more detail. So, uh, or, you know, you don't have to buy anything. If you're just interested in looking and doing some research, um, take, it, take a look. All right, let's get this out of the way. And we'll dive right in and start talking about this beautiful stuff. Why don't we go over here and do the glass first. This is made by Cambridge, and it does indeed have the C in the bottom, in the little diamond, or the triangle, rather. You've seen that before. Uh, there it is. Okay, Cambridge, one of the better glass companies who made what's called elegant uh, glass of the Depression era. It's a console ball, it's pink and it's etched. It's a nice big example too. Now this one has a few scratches in it. We can see here there's some scratches. So that kind of dis 
disfigures this glass slightly, but there's no dishwasher damage to it, and uh, it's still very pretty glass, I think. Nice big center bowl. And then by the Fenton Company, um, an opalescent basket. This is the large 10 inch one. They made these in many different sizes and I've sold them in different sizes before. Uh, but here's the nice big 10 inch version. And it really was their opalescent uh, hobnail line that real Fenton was like a lot of glass companies, especially Fenton in the 30s. You know, they didn't make a lot of dishes. They weren't into kitchenware. And so, uh, they were in big trouble in the 1930s and almost went under, and it was really this hobnail line that um, carried them carried them out of the Depression. It became enormously popular in the 1940s. Now, don't misunderstand, Fenton did make dishes and uh, uh, glassware, I'm sorry, um, tableware is what I'm trying to say, but it was expensive stuff not mass produced because you know Fenton is all made by hand. Everything is hand blown at Fenton. Anyway, uh, there's no marking on it. There doesn't need to be. We know who made this and Fenton before 1970 doesn't have uh, marks on it usually. Uh, anyway, I'll put that down carefully and that's in fantastic condition. I don't know who made that. It is blown. It was blown in a mold. It's a beautiful purple or amethyst vase, however, it might look red in this light, but it is purple. There we go. And you can see it has a thumbprint pattern. That line, that vertical, well, let's make it horizontal. That horizontal line you see right there is a mold line, M-O-L-D. And we can see that the bottom has a polished poncil. This was blown in a mold, and then the hand, the hand crimped the edges of it. And I said I'm kind of teasing you because I'm going to do a video where I'll sort of talk about pontal marks and mold lines and inclusions and bubbles and what's a crack and what's a flea bite and so forth. But I won't do that now. Again, I'm not sure of the maker of this. Uh, but it's a nice large vase and it's in really good condition and just a beautiful, beautiful color really shows up in in the bright light okay all right so that's a, oops that's a nice one all the way in the back you'll recognize a couple pieces from my fall decor which i've decided to sell my autumn decor um hey it just gives me an example to go find more for next year these are two let's see this this one is blown with an applied handle it's a beautiful amber uh pitcher which has a maybe a hint of green in it. Actually, that is the color of my eyes right there. Hazel, amber with a hint of green, sort of. Um, you can see the handle is applied. And this one is also blown and that has a rough poncil on the bottom. And then here's another one over here. I really like this one with this uh, optic effect, ribbed optic effect. You can see it's blown in a mold. And uh, I like all the little bubbles in it. It gives it a real old fashioned kind of a colonial look. Okay, so these are nice for the autumn decorating season. Here are four tumblers by Hocking Glass. Uh, they had not yet become anchor hocking. And these are the Rib Optic Pink Tumblers. I think these are the little five inch ones in pink. It might look crystal. As I've said before, pink is hard. It's hard to get pink to show up sometimes when I'm filming, but uh, you'll have to trust me. Ooh, trust me on that, they're pink. Pink, pink. Pink, I'm told, is the in Christmas color this year. I don't know, but that's what I'm told. And these are from the 30s. And then Anchor Hawking made these uh, spill, splash-proof mixing bowls, which have a very Swedish modern look, uh, or Danish modern. And anyway, they date to the 50s, and this is in the forest green color. I happen to have two uh, the same size. They, these were nesting bowls, but here are two of them. And I think you saw me thrift one a couple weeks, maybe a week ago. Um, I think I listed the two together. Or did I? I don't remember. 
<laughs> I don't remember what I did. I think I might have listed the two together. And then this right here, I don't know who made it. Uh, it's not a swan with its head broken off. It was obviously meant to hang off of the edge of a, of a uh, larger bowl. Probably a large bowl that matched it. Maybe a chip and dip set. And this could have hung over the... Oh, this isn't working like I want it to. All right, let's... Do you see what I'm saying here? This could clip on and hang, and this actually does hang, except it's so heavy it wants to pull the whole thing over. So whether this hung on a metal, metal clip, metal clip, <laughs> which went with chip and dip sets, or whether this just the glass alone, and I have a feeling it, it may have just hung itself on the edge of a larger glass dish in this beautiful red color. Having said all that, uh, I hope it appeals to someone because I couldn't pass it by when I saw it. Now let's see. Okay, let's go over here to the... Let's do one more piece that's uh, platinite. You recognize Hazel Atlas uh, Gay Rainbow Milk Pitcher from the late 40s, which came in several colors, Gay Rainbow, and this was given away in uh, cereal. Kix, K-I-X. Okay, and then, this is an interesting mid-century piece here. For those of you who have a sort of exotic mid-century interior, not getting it to show up very well. Um, what looks like chips in the top, and I know you're saying, oh yeah, those are chips and somebody colored them in. You know, I looked at these very carefully and very closely, and I'm feeling as though they might be part of the manufacturer because they're glazed over. Now, see, I can see detail that you guys can't see just from the video. I'll just zoom in on it anyway. Um, it really does... Hold on, let's try it again. I'd like, I'd like you to see it close up, but... It's really not going to focus like I want it to. It almost, if you'll notice, chips have jagged edges, and these look like like it was they were dense in the pottery. Do you see that right there? No. Try it again. There. You see how it's rounded? There's almost a rim to it. Now you can see. Okay, that is really not indicative of a chip but something done during manufacture because it's almost like when this uh, pottery was pliable, something dinged into it and caused that. And so uh, I really don't feel like those are chips, but something that happened during manufacture. Anyway, uh, I'll show you the back of it. And it says, uh, Hawaiian Cottage, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Now, Cherry Hill, New Jersey is a town that used to be called Merchantville. And I think it was sometime in the 60s that they changed their name, early 60s that they changed their name to Cherry Hill. Uh, the Hawaiian Cottage was one of those old supper clubs that were so popular in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And then I think the thing burnt down in the 70s. So this is the kind of place where people would get all dressed up and go to a supper club and there was a floor show and, and, and a house band and you could have your photograph taken as a souvenir. We've all seen those pictures of people sitting around tables all dressed up and smoking their cigarettes and uh, drinking and having a good time. But that's the type of club that it was. It had an interesting uh, pineapple domed ceiling in, in, in one of the lounges. And it had a gift shop. These were sold in the gift shop in that particular restaurant in New Jersey. So this dates to the mid 60s, right after they changed, Merchantville changed its name to Cherry Hill. And we can see here it says, made exclusively for the Hawaiian Cottage by Odegary Company. Uh, maybe I'll insert some pictures of the old Hawaiian Cottage
Cherry Hill, or Cherry Hill, as a lot of us from Jersey say. I'm a Jersey native, so I'm allowed to say Cherry Hill instead of cher Cherry or Cherry, Cherry. Lots of funny accents in Jersey. And then German Bisque right here. I don't think these are old, but German Bisque is always well done. Well done. You guys are well done. Get over here with your little baskets. Give you a close up. Now, uh, I don't know what you would put in these baskets. I personally wouldn't use them for planters, but uh, hey, I suppose you could. Uh, okay. So we just have Germany and then I guess a mold marker, a production marker, something like that on the bottom. Uh, I don't know the age of these, but there's just something that's telling me they're not uh, old. Of course, old is a very, old means different things to different people. Some of the thrifters in their 20s think 1980s is old, and I don't. So I guess when I say old, I mean I don't think, I don't get the 1880s, 1890s feel. So I don't know when they were made, but I just simply have listed them as German bisque. And these are in really good shape. There aren't any chips or cracks on them. So do you recognize that stamp on the bottom? It just simply says Germany and I don't know. And while we're on Germany, let's pull this chick out. She's also not old, although she looks it. That's a hairstyle popular during the American Civil War in this country, the United States. Uh, 18, you know, 1850s, uh, 60s. So it's a it's a mid 19th century popular hairstyle, but this doll is not that old. These things were made again in the 70s and 80s, and this one also says Germany on the back. And the way it's printed under there uh, is very similar to the way we see it here. So, uh, again, this is not old. I don't know what company made it in Germany, but maybe the doll collectors do. There's nothing under here, so we're not talking about a piece from the Civil War era, but a relatively new piece. Now she's in great shape, as you can see. The porcelain is beautiful, the paint is wonderful. So I guess I need to bone up on my German porcelain and bisque and so forth, because it's not, it's not all as old as one might think. Okay, Hazel Atlas made this. You've seen me with this before. It's a platinite bowl for children, and it's got all the little farm animals on it. Came in different colors, and this would have been this would have come out in the 1930s, 40s, and then Hall Company made this. Uh, mm, Poppy was a very popular pattern for them, and it's got platinum highlights on the outside. This is a, a grease jar. I'll let you see that. Oh, uh, there we go. pattern came out in the 1930s and you could have a whole dinnerware set, kitchen set. It was a very popular pattern for the Hall Company. I've shown you this before, the Scottish clans and their tartans. This was published in Scotland in 1955. I have no Scottish blood, but for those of you who do, look inside. You can see all of the, of the different tartans and it says right there, and their tartans. Okay, so there are the, the different tartans or plaids, and plaids, and so forth, and so on. Beautiful colored plates, and then all the different, let's see, you get uh, the different names of all the families. There's the uh, Gordons, and uh, the Grant clan, and the Hendersons. How long should I go on? The McDonald's had a farm. The McGregor's. Uh, the McKinnons, the McClodes, you get the idea. The McNabs, okay, you might want that for uh, yourself or a family member. Standing back up, oh, my knees didn't uh, crack that time. I love this. Made in Czechoslovakia. 
and it just has that made in Czechoslovakia look from the 30s. A reamer, isn't this great? In an orange peel sort of pattern on there. I love this guy. Okay, we can see Czechoslovakia, it won't focus, but there's the Czechoslovakia stamp right there. And even without that, uh, you just get a feel about Czechoslovakian pottery from that era. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, there's a poodle. Hello, poodle. And he was made in Japan, and he's so, I don't know, 1955, 1965. And I washed him, and he's been peeing all over the place ever since I washed him because some water got in that little hole right there. Let's see if he's going to... No, he didn't pee this time. We can just see the tail end of his Japan sticker. And he's got all this... I guess we call this spaghetti. You know, this kind of... Not really spaghetti, but you know what I mean on him. And he's in good condition. I don't think think anything on him is chipped. So he's cute. And then there's a planter back there for Easter time of a bunny wearing a top hat and he's holding a carrot. He's as cute as he can be. That's probably 1940s. Made in the USA is my best guess on that. With one ear out and one ear up. Very jauntily uh, wearing his top hat. I like him. This little poor little thing right here. She's made in Japan and obviously she has a skin condition here. But won't someone fall in love with her? Come on now. I, I had the most wonderful conversation with a lady in the thrift store. We both sat there and said, oh bless her heart. And we reached for her at the same time. And the other lady wasn't going to buy her. And she convinced me... <laughs> to buy her. She has no chips. She's not a salt and pepper shaker. You could stick a flower right there in that little hole in her basket. She is probably from the 1940s and she obviously has eaten too much chocolate or something. I know that's a old wives tale. Chocolate isn't supposed to make your face break out. And then in front of her is a Royal Copley bird. I know he's Royal Copley because I had one before and the sticker fell off. Did I already tell you that? I think I already told you that and I think I already showed you this. Oh my gosh. I need to go back and look at my old, old videos because now I'm starting to repeat myself. And I have a fit when my mother does that. You told me that five times. I know Uncle Henry passed away. And uh, now I'm doing it. This is the dog that, uh, oh my goodness. Mm. What's the one that brings you liquor when you pass out in the snow? Mm. He's made in Japan and he is beautiful. He is, uh, his colors are, say Bernard! And I don't know if that's true, but I've, I've seen it in Bugs Bunny cartoons. He, his coloring is beautiful. It's a, a very, uh, almost a matte uh, glaze. Very soft glaze. Eggshell, I guess. Not matte. I guess I'd say eggshell. And beautifully done. I just love the paint work on him. Very lifelike is he. And he's uh, one of those mid-century made in Japan pieces. The kitty, I think, is Royal Copley. And we'll bring her out. Okay. Sassy looking kitty. Mm. Uh, okay. So, kitty's cute. I've had this kitty before, and there's not... Well, you, you know, you always see that fine crazing on there, which I don't really consider damage, and crazing really doesn't bother me on pieces of porcelain. We talked about the Hall Company who, uh, let's see, made the poppy, red poppy. Hall also made this little milk pitcher. And I don't know if this was actually meant for restaurant use. If it's, it's heavy, almost like commercial grade, restaurant grade. It does say Hall, although I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this video. It says Hall right there. And it's a deep, deep, dark cobalt blue uh, milk pitcher creamer. So I like that a lot. Sorry, sweetie. 
Uh, and this is just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. It's so sweet. So here's Mama Deer and Baby Fawn. And this is Royal Copley, which it does uh, have embossed in the... Uh, can you see it? See it? Okay, so I'm um, again, I'm, I'm guessing on these that we're talking 1940s, 50s, I don't really know. I don't have a Royal Copley book, but it's a planter, and it really is a, a sweet moment of the mother deer and her fawn. And there's no, uh, this one doesn't have any crazing on it. Okay, and it also is chip free. I actually like displaying it both ways, but uh, I fell in love with that when I saw it because it's just, it, it's depicted uh, very tenderly. Very well done, Royal Copley. And two more things and we're going to wrap it up back here is, I think I showed you that before so we won't get into that too much, but it is a tr late, a tr uh, mm. Anyway, the, it's all in really good condition. The only issue with any of this back here is the two cruets are missing their stoppers. Not a big deal. I see matching cruet stoppers all the time. So I'll let the new owner decide what they want to put in the oil and vinegar. And these have no spoons. The silver spoons are missing from these. And this does open up, but it, this one is stuck at the moment. So we're going to leave it closed. They open and close, and then the salt and peppers are in the back. This rotates this way, okay? And this is from the late Victorian era, this piece. And all of this is etched, and they all match. Nothing on here has been replaced. All six of these are matching glass, can, uh, matching glass jars. These would be shakers, which we would call salt and pepper. And then there's an oil and vinegar. And then these two little ones in the front where you spoon out, I guess you could either put jam or honey or whatever whatever else, mustard, you know, relish, different kinds of things. Uh, the only issue with it, other than the stoppers are missing their cruets, is that the silver plate is almost completely gone, but it has come off very evenly. It's not splotchy looking, so I think it's still respectable even though the silver plate is, is pretty much gone. All right, and then finally from the 1950s in black and pink, I love it, love it, love it, love it, are two casserole dishes, and I'm selling these together as a pair, and these are, I think, made by Cronin, uh, and it's Bake Oven. Bake Oven, see it right there? Okay, USA, Cronin Pottery Company, I think, if my memory is serving, and these are both in excellent condition. There's no chips or cracks, and these things don't, I don't even think they've been used that's not a crack down there. Um, that is, get it up where you can see it. That's just a line inside where the uh, paint sort of uh, dripped, if you will. All right, I know that's not showing up well because well, I've twisted it out of the light. But let me back up and did I, oh, I forgot something. But I did show you this before. This is a made in Japan honey pot in the shape of a, of a beehive with bees on it. And really cute. Let you see that. And it's connected to its under, under plate. And it says made in Japan. And that's one of those marks that dates it to the 20s and 30s. Kind of a neat one. I think. So we'll put you back now. And I think that's it. Back up again. Yeah, okay, so it's all listed in the old Curiosity Shop for auction. The auctions run seven days, and most of this stuff has been listed now for a day or two. I've got more I'm listing, and I've listed more that's not on this kitchen counter, so I hopefully will be back in uh, a day or two with another thrift haul. All right, I've got some leftover butternut squash soup to eat, and I think I'm going to pour it over top of my turkey and stuffing and consider it gravy. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Some snow is coming for a lot of us here in this country, so be careful. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, and so long for now.